I really want to try this thing. Mm-hmm. I bet you do. I feel like I could make it happen. Welcome back to the channel. It's another week on the homestead. Not as busy as it's been, but still we got a few things accomplished. Welcome to our channel. I'm Kathy and that's Rich and we are living off grid in the Adirondacks of New York State while building a homestead from scratch on 135 acres so we can live a simpler life of freedom and sustainability. So last week we talked about starting on the foundation. Some people were asking what type of foundation if we're building above the frost line. So I just wanted to say that this is not your typical house, so therefore it's not your typical foundation. So we ended up getting five deliveries Whoa. of stone. We're at home today, looks like. They came and delivered some more stone, a different kind. That wasn't even the stone he wanted. What was that whole story? Yeah, even the stone has become an issue. It was basically the last of the stone for a while. They're, yeah. they're, they're focusing on blacktop for a while or something. Yeah, so crazy craziness, even with trying to get that kind of a building material. Right. And speaking of deliveries, our road coming oh, yeah. to this place here is still closed, the main road. It's so. been how long now? Like a month? Yeah. At least? It's been a long time. I don't, I don't and even there's know if they're no... Gonna, yeah. I don't know if they're going to fix it. We have to take the back roads and it's, it's crazy. just really bumpy and it's not fun. But we did. We went to Home Depot because uh, in the last video we showed you that we got the membrane and we realized that we need, in order to secure that membrane to the dome, we needed a... A Hilti gun. You know, the ram set. Uh, cement nail. Cement right. nail. We got some 27 caliber shot for the ram set, for the healthy gun. We got a 200 amp, 3060 panel, some conduit, and we found some stuff on clearance that might actually, it's in a, a roofing adhesive that might actually work really well. That to help. stuff. Yeah. To hold the membrane down in certain corners in the areas in, like that. In weird spots if yeah. we run out of the adhesive they gave us. Right. Or we feel like we need a little extra. We're nowhere near ready for doing the electrical panel box, but this was the only one they had that was 200 amp. This was it. That would fit on each, you know, 30 yeah. spaces, 60 circuits. It should be more than enough for us. When we come to town, we do all our running in one day. We got plastic here that we had in the storage locker. Right. We have one inch ram set concrete nails. Yeah. We got clamps for the ERV unit. From all our ductwork work. And what's in this box, babe? This is the Hilti gun that's going to shoot those nails. Uh huh. Seems like we're picking these things up a little early because we're nowhere near ready. But as we find out things we need or as we have a coupon, like we just had a $25 off coupon right. if you spent $200 at Home Depot. So, waste not one. We're home, we're unloading. But this is the Hilti gun we got. The reason we got this one is because when we looked at Home Depot's website, we saw that this is the one that they rent. They don't rent the Ram set, they rent this one. So we figured it was the easiest one to use. And it came with all the <laughs> maintenance kit and a silencer. We looked up what it would cost to rent it for a week and honestly it was just cheaper to buy it because we don't even know if we can get that done in a week. Uh, we we did know. get the big delivery that we've been waiting for since The January. generator <laughs> finally came. We got time. It's black fly season. So much fun. It's not as bad in the clearing. It's worse in the woods like right here where we are, at the base of our driveway. What's up, you don't want your hat? No, I don't need it because I'm gonna be in the... Uh, They're everywhere around you though. I'm gonna be in the tractor cab, which is gonna keep me nice and protected. Hmm. What about you? Lucky you. I'm wearing mine. Look at them all. They're everywhere. Do you see them? I see them. They're awful. Honey, we have to get that mesh up. Eat those flies directly. Uh -huh. 
filter is installed. It's got some kind of wire here. Does it come with oil in it? No, no way. I wonder if they test, oh, wait. tested ran it. Honey, it's got oil. You would think that they had some oil in it to run it and test it, right? Almost full. Yeah, there's oil in it. So that would make sense if they would try it, right? Yep. Is that the bag of screws I lost today? Did you lose a bag of screws today? I did lose a bag of screws. Well, I, I guess bag. we found them. This is what they call a tire finder. We have to mm. think about where we want to put the generator, but I know, I know. we're very torn know. over whether we should put the generator here near the propane tank and run a very long electrical line, but have a short propane line or put the generator closer to the house the propane line is something like seven dollars a foot yeah installed yeah, rounded up to a hundred feet yeah or more so that's seven hundred dollars the cable for the generator is about 350 a foot or right, half the price it's a number two wire four conductors so you could trade off the length of the cable going further, but the propane line closer might save us a little bit more money. Right, but in the long run... We might be kicking ourselves. Did you I don't know. Yourself, <laughs> oh my God, don't do that. I'm putting that in the video. <laughs> Reading up on that, we got to get some wire and uh, we're going to be in touch with the propane company soon. So we were able to pick up another load of some free bricks from right. a friend of the family. family. She said they came out of a house from the 1800s? Yep. Wow. wow. Rich is trying to get them to the edge of the trailer. We're really gonna learn how to become bricklayers. We love the idea of just repurposing old building materials is going to be great. Absolutely. And it's going to add nice character to the, to the build. Right. One of the things that was kind of a little weird now that we're up here closer to the clearing is we don't know when people are coming in our driveway. Uh, normally when we were down lower, I could hear them coming in from the street. We could even see them you coming see in them. from the street. Up here we have no idea. So we bought this really cool thing. It's called a guard line. I think that's perfect. And that'll point down the driveway and hopefully pick up any big trucks, people, or ATVs coming up the driveway. So you're gonna go take a quick ATV ride by it, right? Yeah. All right, I'll wait and see what happens. I got a ding a ling a lingo. So now we know when those deliveries come in the driveway. We're not taken by surprise anymore. So that's pretty handy. A couple things around camp this weekend. First thing was the solar panels. We need more power. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what was happening is I have a MacBook Pro. Right. And it uses 85 watts per hour. Right. So with the 100 watt panel only operating at even maximum 80% efficiency, that's only 80 watts. 80 watts. And it wasn't enough. And yesterday was a really cloudy day. And even just using the router and my computer, I ran that battery down. All the way down. Yeah. So we ended up having to run the generator all night long. Probably, what was it, like eight hours straight? Yeah, about that, to get it all charged up fully again. Right. Because it's important to have the battery fully charged, you know. Um, these batteries don't like to be depleted completely. Uh-oh, I see black flies. Anyway, so what'd you do? So I had this other little 20 watt paddle. It was the one that came off the trailer initially, yeah, was right? the original one. And I just sort of piggybacked it in parallel with this one. And now we have a couple more watts. And 20. So we have 120. 20. We'll get this thing fully charged today right now. We still do have to fire up the generator to make a pot of coffee mm -hmm. or when we take a shower so the pump can continuously run. Um, but other than that, the 120 watts that we have now is really doing the trick, I think. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we had to do this week, it, it's black fly season, and there was a couple of days when the black flies were so bad. All right, Steven's working. We are going to put up our mesh screen. Mm -hmm. 
we'll update some of the uh, sticky stuff and we'll tack the bottom and the black flies can't get us. That's right. <laughs> this cost us $90 how many years ago? In like what, 2018? If you look over here. <laughs> 2019? I don't even know. The little squirrels or the mice or something were eating it. Yeah, they take pieces of it for their little so nests. that's why that happened. <laughs> but honestly, this has lasted us a good long time. If we could just get through this last season, we will. our house will be built and that'll be it. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to get some tape and the staple gun. Perfect. Scientific explanation. <laughs> the rubbing back and forth creates heat, which... <laughs> activates the glue. <laughs> <laughs> this is science with Richie. That was the best thing we ever did. I yeah, mean, no. It just expanded our living space it for the summer. It paid for itself, for sure. Anything it's, else? Yeah, did my, my Mother's Day present. Plants. They were thriving in the bathtub in they the trailer. They really were. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that could not continue. And it's still, what was it, 31 degrees when we woke up this morning? Yeah, it was morning? cold last night, so we can't really keep them outside yet. So no. we made a little portable sort of temporary greenhouse. really can't plant a garden anywhere to this year because we just don't know where anything's going to end up being. Um, so they're just going to grow in containers and hopefully do well all summer. But... And they're on a pallet, so if we have to move them, we will. Exactly. So it's a temporary mobile greenhouse that will take the plastic off in a couple of weeks and we'll still keep it in there. It'll still be our little temporary mobile garden. Keep her busy. <laughs> like we won't be busy enough building yeah. a house. <laughs> So they used a, a, like a GPS sort of system to visualize where all the, where the center of the building is in relationship to the garage and make sure everything is square and well, round, well, <laughs> square with the garage lined up. Right. So like when we do build the carport that the roofs and everything line up, but that they got their dimensions, right? And what did he say? It's within half an inch, a half an inch because our house is a dome. It has like a curve shape to it. And it has like two tunnels going out the north and the northwest side. All right, so this is our entry. Yep. Walk in. And our stairs will be here. Oh my God, it looks so tiny. And this is the dining room. And our living area. This is the center of our house. I'm in the kitchen area. And a hallway. Wow, just seems so tiny. This is our bedroom. It seems so small. It really does. I am so glad we didn't go with the smaller house. You can see like there's these interesting geometric shapes in the center of the house. And those are areas where the cement is going to be 18 inches thick. Right, there's extra cement in those areas because it's gonna be a load-bearing wall for the loft. What a beautiful night. What do you think, honey? Big day tomorrow? So they sprayed it all out, they staked it, they have like these interesting points all around the outside perimeter that they can zero in on and make sure that everything is correct. 
because there's a lot of angles involved in this build as well. Then he came in and he started to put down the stone. does look small, but I really think that that's going to change a little bit as the walls go up. Ah, uh, honey, the black flies are coming out. I gotta go. Okay. They're building the foundation up, which is why it looks so high. It's going to be 14 inches of stone, and then it's going to be another four inches of concrete. It's a monolithic slab. They're going to pour it all at once. There is a drier, heavier mix around the perimeter. That they're going From to what I understand, out. and that uh, goes in first, and then they're going to do the final pour down the center. So. Right. This is for the supports for the stairs. And that's a load-bearing wall, and that little angle is there because that is actually where the door to our bedroom goes. So these stakes are not actually the edge of our house. They're just the edge of what they're calling a haunch. A heavier sort of uh, pump of concrete all the way around the perimeter. 18 inches deep by a foot and a half to two feet wide. So that haunch is all the way around the whole dome perimeter and it's where the load bearing walls are. You're standing in a haunch. I'm standing in the stair haunch. <laughs> <laughs> this just sounds so weird. And this is this little thing here, that's the most important point of our house. They call it the vertex. It's the center point for the dome, which is extremely important to know where that is because basically every other measurement goes off of that vertex. So rather than being your typical rectangular home, our home is based off a vertex with a lot of angles going out in all different directions. And they laid out points all over the property as far as all the way over there. So there's one over there where he is with the pink flag on it. There's one over there. There's little ones. They have these little posts on the two corners of the garage. This is why this is something that we really couldn't have done ourselves. They're trying to make sure that they really get it right. And now we're waiting for the plumber to come next, correct? Right. Yep, well, he's gonna run some pipes, all the drain waste and vent pipes. Uh, we're also gonna put in a couple of pieces of conduit for um, some heating pipes and uh, possibly some electrical lines too. We'll have to see yeah. about that. We're not really doing any of that stuff, but we wanna make sure that those, those pipes are there in case we want to do it in the future. Right. So that's it this week. Not a lot. Next week, hopefully, the plumber. Yep. The, they're going to put up the boards. The forms, yep. And get maybe, some concrete in here by the end of the, the week. Maybe the following week, pour. If it's not next week with the pour, it'll be the following week. But there's a few things to do. So we're getting there. It's baby steps and it's happening. Yep, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks. Oh. Ouch. Oops. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit rocks. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Oh, man. It's okay.